Hello everyone. In the previous video, we have studied various metabolic adaptations that occur in fasting and starvation. In this video, we are going to study the regulation of those metabolic adaptations. There are four mechanisms of regulation of metabolism in fasting and starvation. The first is availability of substrates. Second, allosteric regulation of enzymes. Third is covalent modifications of enzyme that is phosphorylation by glucagon. And fourth is induction or repression of enzyme synthesis which occurs at gene level primarily through regulation of transcription. In fasting condition, glucose level is decreased and also the glucose 6-phosphate level. So there is no conversion of glucose 6-phosphate to glycogen. It means that glycogenesis is inhibited. In this condition, glucagon level is increased. The glucagon acts through adenyl cyclase cyclic AMP signaling pathway. Cyclic AMP is second messenger and which causes phosphorylation of enzymes. This has been already discussed in the video on signaling pathways of metabolic regulation. The link of the video is given in the description box. The glucagon then inhibit glycogen synthase by phosphorylating it because we know that glycogen synthase is active in dephosphorylated condition. That's why decreased availability of glucose and glucose 6-phosphate and inhibition of glycogen synthase by glucagon decreases the process of glycogenesis. In addition to this, glucagon activates glycogen phosphorylase by phosphorylating it. The glycogen phosphorylase is active in phosphorylated state. And that's how in fasting condition there is glycogen breakdown occurs which leads to formation of glucose and there is increased glycogenolysis. We know that phosphofructokinase 1 is rate limiting enzyme in glycolysis which converts fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. And fructose 2,6-bisphosphate, it is formed from fructose 6-phosphate. And this is allosteric activator of phosphofructokinase 1 and it increases the rate of glycolysis in well-fed condition. In addition to this, it inhibits fructose 1,6-bisphosphatase which is important enzyme in gluconeogenesis. That's why in well-fed condition, there is increased glycolysis and decreased gluconeogenesis. But what happens in fasting and starvation? There is increased level of glucagon and that's why the level of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate is decreased. And the effect activation of phosphofructokinase 1 is removed. And that's why glycolysis is decreased. Likewise, the inhibitory effect on fructose 1 6 bisphosphate is also removed and it will lead to increased gluconeogenesis. In addition to this, Glucagon also inhibit this pyruvate kinase by phosphorylating it and thus it decreases the rate of glycolysis. This glucagon also induces the synthesis of phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase which is the important enzyme in gluconeogenesis in the formation of phosphoenol pyruvate and this leads to increased level of this phosphoenol pyruvate which is the intermediate in gluconeogenesis and that's why there is increased gluconeogenesis. In fasting and starvation, glucagon and epinephrine are the important hormones. They phosphorylate the enzyme hormone sensitive lipase by causing its uh, phosphorylation and triacylglycerol are broken down into glycerol and fatty acids. So this glucagon and epinephrine increases lipolysis by causing phosphorylation. These fatty acids then enter mitochondria and undergo beta oxidation of fatty acids and the level of acetyl-CoA is increased. It undergoes TCA cycle to further increase the concentration of citrate and citrate is a allosteric inhibitor of this phosphofructokinase 1 and that's how also it decreases glycolysis. Glucagon also inhibit the important enzyme that is acetyl-CoA carboxylase which is the rate limiting enzyme in fatty acid synthesis. It converts acetyl-CoA to malonyl-CoA which further is involved in fatty acid synthesis. So glucagon inhibit this fatty acid synthesis and lipogenesis that is formation of triacylglycerol. So in fasting and starvation there is increased lipolysis and decreased lipogenesis. In fasting and starvation, as we know that there is increased lipolysis 
and the glycerol which is formed is used up in gluconeogenesis the fatty acid oxidation leads to increased level of acetyl coa acetyl coa is a allosteric inhibitor of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex so it will uh, block the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl coa and acetyl coa is an allosteric activator of pyruvate carboxylase which converts pyruvate to oxaloacetate and this oxaloacetate is used up in gluconeogenesis and thus there is increased gluconeogenesis in fasting and starvation there is increased a production of acetyl coa due to increased beta oxidation of fatty acids and this acetyl coa is diverted to ketone body synthesis which occur in liver this acetyl coa cannot be converted back to pyruvate because the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl coa is irreversible step and that's why there is no net synthesis of carbohydrates from fat in addition to this when acetyl coa concentration uh, exceeds the oxidative capacity of tca cycle it is not utilized in the tca cycle and it uh, which leads to increase in uh, pool of the acetyl coa moreover the oxaloacetate which is the intermediate of tca cycle is being used up in gluconeogenesis in starvation and that's why it lowers the concentration of oxaloacetate and it is not available for tca cycle please note that this oxaloacetate cannot be regenerated in tca cycle as the two carbon of acetyl coa which enters this tca cycle are released as carbon dioxide and there is no regeneration of oxaloacetate and because of all this condition there is increased acetyl coa pool which is diverted to ketone body synthesis ketone body synthesis occurs after the first day of starvation that is in the early stage of starvation but uh the tissues like brain kidney cardiac muscle heart they start utilizing ketone bodies as a source of energy in the intermediate stage that is after 2 or 3 days of starvation and uh in the prolonged stage of starvation that is after more than 24 days of starvation only brain can utilize uh, ketone bodies because other organs spare it for the utilization by brain this ketone body synthesis leads to increase ketone body concentration in blood and then it starts appearing in the urine so it leads to ketonemia and ketouria which is called as ketosis and this explains the basis of biochemical basis of ketosis that is ketonemia and ketonuria in starvation and please note that though liver can synthesize ketone bodies it can never utilize as a source of fuel let's summarize the regulation of metabolism in fasting and starvation first mechanism is availability of substrate in fasting and starvation there is decreased availability of glucose and glucose 6 phosphate so there is no glucose glycogen synthesis so glycogen synthesis is inhibited moreover there is a lipo increased lipolysis increased fatty acid oxidation so there is increased acetyl coa production which is further diverted to ketone bodies synthesis and utilization in the allosteric regulation due to increased fatty acid oxidation there is increased acetyl coa production which activates allosterically the enzyme pyruvate carboxylase and it inhibits the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase and in turn it increases the rate of gluconeogenesis moreover increased citrate will inhibit the enzyme phosphofructokinase and thus it will decreases the rate of glycolysis glucagon and epinephrine are two important hormones of fasting and starvation glucagon acts through two mechanism first is covalent modifications that is by causing phosphorylation of enzyme and second is by induction of enzyme synthesis the phosphorylation makes some enzymes active and the examples are glycogen phosphorylase so glucagon activates the enzyme glycogen phosphorylase by ph phosphorylating it and thus increases the rate of glycogenolysis fructose 16 bisphosphatase which is the enzyme of gluconeogenesis becomes active in fasting and starvation and that's why increase rate of gluconeogenesis hormone sensitive lipase is the enzyme of lipolysis and that's why there is increased rate of lipolysis in fasting and starvation the enzymes which are inactive due to phosphorylation are glycogen synthase the glycogen synthase is inactive in phosphorylated condition that's why there is decreased glycogenesis pyruvate kinase is the enzyme of glycolysis which becomes inactive due to phosphorylation and that's why there is decreased glycolysis 
Acetyl CoA carboxylase is the enzyme of fatty acid synthesis which is inactive due to phosphorylation by glucagon and that's why there is decreased fatty acid synthesis. Glucagon also induces the synthesis of phosphoenol pyruvate carboxykinase which is the important enzyme in gluconeogenesis and thus it increases the rate of gluconeogenesis. Epinephrine phosphorylates the enzyme hormone sensitive lipase and thus it increases the rate of lipolysis in adipose tissue. 